Hello and welcome to your weekly news highlights with me, Hasina Mumtaz. Here are your top stories for this week. The Honourable Chief Justice of Bangladesh, Mohammed Muzamil Hussain, has formed a three-member bench at the Supreme Court to deal with the issue of the legality of incorporating jamaat e islami into the constitution of Bangladesh. The members of the bench are Justice Murazim Hussain, Justice Mohammed Inaitul Rahim and Justice Kazi Razawal Haq. Meanwhile, Abdul Qadar Mullah's appeal has been scheduled to be heard on Sunday, March 31st. Advocate M.K. Rahman, the additional Attorney General, has said that 24th of March is scheduled for submitting the concise statements of both sides. The appeal is scheduled to be heard by a five-member bench of the Supreme Court, led by the Chief Justice of Bangladesh. Our correspondent Abu Saleh Zahi reports. The Shabad protesters have demanded a ban on jamaat e islami from involvement in the national politics of Bangladesh. They have also called for the death sentence for all war criminals. The Tariqat Federation of Bangladesh has joined with them in these demands and echoed their calls. Saeed Razaul Haq, leader of the Tariqat Federation, filed a writ four years ago which has now come up on the court list. As the issues involved in the writ are of significant importance to both the constitution of Bangladesh and fundamental principles of law, the matter has been referred to the Honourable Chief Justice of Bangladesh. It has been said that in the writ application that one, Jamaat does not consider that all power is with the people and that the people are sovereign. Two, in the structural rules there exist differences based on grounds of religion and gender. These are fundamental clauses that conflict with the Bangladesh constitution. Barrister Tanya Amir, an advocate for the petitioner of the writ, said, Jamaat has brought some amendments to their party constitution and there are a few clauses that are in conflict with the constitution of Bangladesh, especially where they say that they do not hold that all power resides with the people. On the other hand, Barrister Abdul Rajak, the advocate acting for Jamaat Islami, has said that Jamaat is an organized party from the time of Pakistan. He thinks that there is no merit in the writ against Jamaat. It has been issued for political motives. Jamaat has amended its conflicting clauses, as was suggested by the Election Commission. Ahmad Mirajuddin, the younger brother of the popular music composer and director Ahmad Imtiaz Bulbul, has been mysteriously killed. His body was found last Saturday. It was lying by the railway line in Kilket. Following a post-mortem, the doctor said he was killed by strangulation. His family alleges that Miraj was killed because Bulbul is a witness for the state and against Ghulam Azam, the accused in the war crimes tribunal. Ahmad Imtiaz Bulbul has sought protection from the state. Our correspondent, Tamjid Shumon, reports. Miraj lived at his sister's house in Dunmondi, in Dhaka. Last Sunday, he went out into the city. His last words to his sister before leaving the house was to ask her whether he looked smart. He did not return having left the house. Ahmad Imtiaz Bulbul is heartbroken at the killing of his younger brother. He said that his brother did not belong to any, any political party, he did not have any enemies and he was polite to everybody and a very innocent type of person. Bulbul said that his younger brother may have been killed because he is a state witness against Ghulam Azam. But he also suggested that it may also be due to something more sinister, like a plan to kill the main witness, which is Bulbul himself. He suggested that all witnesses be given protection by the state. Miraj was found lying dead by the Kilkat flyover near the railway line. His body had laid there for some time. Eventually, his nephew was contacted using the mobile phone that was found on his person. The police could not confirm in immediately whether it was murder, but the deceased had blood on his eyes and face. The dead body was taken by the police to Dhaka Medical College for a post-mortem. The doctor at the college said it seems that Miraj was strangled to death. The Honourable Prime Minister has said that cinema influences people and therefore artists should make cinemas that help, cinemas that help to remove the ills of society and contribute towards a more positive society. She, that, she said this on Wednesday at the National Film Awards 2011. Our correspondent Najwana Chaudhry reports. The famous thespian actor, the king of Bangladeshi cinema, Rajak, has been entertaining audiences since 1966. In recognition of his contribution to cinema, the National Film Awards 2011 began with honouring him with a Lifetime Achievement Award. 
the Prime Minister herself presented the award. This time, there were 24 award categories. The Best Film Award was presented to director Nasir Uddin Bachu for his film Gorilla. The Prime Minister in her speech said that artists have to have a clear sense of national identity to develop and contribute to the field of arts and literature. She said that the social ills that threaten the fabric of society should be addressed in the arts. She also said that what she wants from those in the arts is for society to be guided onto the good path through their mediums. She said, you are creatively and culturally aware and as such you can help society with your works. She said her party, the Army League, has declared cinema as an industry, given tax exemptions to build cineplexes and also provided other benefits in order to encourage people from all social classes to go to cinemas. She said that cinema for children should be a priority because nowadays in cities many children don't even have enough spaces for play. Later in the evening she enjoyed various cultural programs alongside artists, actors, writers and others. The Tigers have just completed the gold test with a lot of promise. Musfik's double century, Ashraful's 190, Young Nasir's first century, Mumin's 50, make this test a memorable historical one for the Bangladeshi cricket team. The Tigers drew in the game, which is their eighth draw in total, and Bangladeshi's first double century earner. Musfik was man of the match. Our correspondent Shubrata Bobby reports. On the fourth day of the game, the fate of the test seemed evident. On day five, everyone waited for a miracle. A back-to-back -back century is achieved by the Sri Lankan team. History was made on achieving a fourth century against Bangladesh by Sanjay Kar. This meant a total of eight centuries in one test. It was the first time that the Sri Lankan goal witnessed such a spectacle. Those are your highlights for this week. Please join me, Hasina Momtaz, again, same time next week. Thank you for watching.